When I saw Beast revealed, I decided I had to build an OTK deck, and I knew it was going to be fun, but I wasn't prepared for how strong it is. The overall goal of the Beast Exodia deck is to control the board and slow your opponent down while questing where you can. On top of that, we need to do our best to expend our opponent's resources and generally discard our opponent's cards through our own card effects that we see in the set 2 Emerald package. This will hopefully let us interrupt our opponent's curve and remove some of their removal options for when we want to set up a Beast later, because once we do get their hand size low and we know that they probably can't deal with our board, then we play our beast down and set up for a big combo to finish them off. Next up, we have a card that the deck is named after and built around Beast. This card is a 6 cost, inkable 4-5 that quests for 2 with the incredible ability Second Wind. Whenever an opposing character is damaged, you may ready this character. This is an absolutely insane ability that we can really work around well with some of our steel options in this deck. The ways you can trigger this card are primarily by, well, only by dealing damage to your opponent's characters. Uh, you can do this in multiple ways. Uh, you can do it through challenging with Beast or with your own characters. You can do it through pinging, so maybe you have a Hans at quest, throwing one damage here and there. Or you can use AoE-based damage removal, which will also trigger Beast. This leaves us tons of options to have a massive turn where Beast is re-readying itself and questing two, three, four, five times for a ton of lore in one go. What's really crazy is that this effect also applies on your opponent's turn. So if you run a bodyguard character, when your opponent challenges the bodyguard character because it can't challenge your beast without removing the bodyguard first since it acts as a taunt, then after your opponent's character takes damage from the bodyguard character, the beast will re-ready, thereby protecting itself from attack. This is the primary reason for including the free drop resist bodyguard character, the prince. Next up with the absolute juggernaut of a character from set one, the big Tinkerbell. This card is probably going to jump up in price for set two, so make sure to pick up some copies while you can. And the reason is, is because it's a six cost inkable four five at quest for two. That's a shift four and carries not one, but two abilities. Now these abilities are rock the boat. When you play this character, deal one damage to each opposing character. This is a major way that we're going to be triggering beast and activating its ability. And also puny pirate. During your turn, whenever this character banishes another character in a challenge, you may target an opposing character for 2 damage. This is a great way to control and clear boards, while also triggering the beast effect, allowing us to quest more for game. Overall, this card's really strong. It's great for shutting down early aggression if you're able to shift it on top of a Tinkerbell. Deals very nicely with wide, aggressive, low health boards, and, you know, triggers our beast. What more could you want? With AoE and single target removal, bundled up into one character with a body that quests for two, you probably couldn't ask for much more, but you do, and with this deck, it synergizes with the new card, Bucky. Uh, this will mean that whenever we play this card, because it's a floodborne, if Bucky is on the field, our opponent will have to discard a card, which is another way to both challenge our opponent's resources on the board, but also challenge our opponent's resources in their hand. Next up, we have another incredible steel card from set one, and that is Hans. It is a four-cost, inkable, free-free quest for two, with the insane effect of stage a little accident. This effect synergizes amazingly with our deck because whenever this character quests, you may target a chosen character and you may deal one damage to a chosen character. This is another way to trigger our beast effect. Even without the beast synergy, it's just a very solid ping for single target removal, which is why it was so good in set one and will be even better in set two in combination with beast. The other synergy it has is with a new single target removal spell coming to M Emerald in set 2. And that new removal card coming in set 2 to Emerald is the free cost inkable Ring the Bell with the absolutely nutty effect of banish any chosen damage character. This is obviously insane with the cards we've seen so far in this deck profile and you will get very very good use of it for single target removal for mainly high health characters which Steel might have struggled to do before the introduction of this card. Aside from synergizing very well with Hans, this will also synergize with any of our cards that being an opponent character for any amount of damage, be it Grab Your Sword or Tinkerbell. Honestly, this card has been sorely needed will make Emerald Steel an absolutely monster of a control deck. Now, it just wouldn't be a steel control deck without Grab Your Sword. Despite being uninkable, the five cost song card will still be absolutely insane, even with the set two power levels. It's being able to sing a five cost character like one of your Tinkerbells to deal two damage to each opposing character, or just paying five ink to do it, is one of the best removal options 
cards you have in the current game. Now that you add it in a deck where Beast synergizes off of it so that it helps your aggression for questing as well, or just clearing boards with the Beast, which you probably don't want to do because you have no way of healing back up. I mean, the options are limitless, really. We just have so many different ways to synergize with this deck that it's hard to not be able to pull off that combo. I mean, this card is so impactful that probably the entire set one meta, especially for aggression decks, was defined by having cards that weren't too helpful below because they would die so easily to grab your sword. Definitely make sure you're running three or four copies of these in any of your steel decks going forward. It was an insane card in the first chapter and it'll still be really good in Rise of the Flood Ball. Got a set one classic and that is one of my favorite cards. My favorite two drop even, Flynn Rider. Flynn Rider is an inkable two drop that is a one two which isn't a great stat line but it quests for two and has the ability, here comes the smolder. Whenever this character is challenged, the challenging player chooses and discards a card. We have tons of ways to synergize with this in our deck, but without that synergy, forcing your opponent to discard a card to deal with your threatening quest two character is just very, very, very strong. This card's effect pairs amazingly with being able to follow up with a new card in set two, King John, on turn three. Prince John is a free cost, uninkable one two that quests for two. Not the best stat line, but the reason that it's so good to play on free, especially after the Flynn Rider, is that it both has the ability Ward and the ability I Sentence You. If your opponent discards one or more cards, you may draw a card. It's obviously great with Flynn Rider because not only do they have to worry about uh, them discarding a card uh, if they attack into our Flynn Rider, but they have to worry about us drawing a card too, which becomes a net two positive card advantage. This, this is a card that you probably don't want to be questing with this often because with the Ward, you want it to be very sticky on the board, hard for your opponent to deal with so that you can synergize with other cards. Before I move on to the cards that it synergizes with, I'd like to point out that if you play a whole new world, you will actually be at a one card advantage if you have a Prince John in the board because you will have eight cards to your opponent's seven. Daisy Duck is a four cost inkable card that we can play after our Prince John with a two free quest for two stat line and the ability four. Whenever this character quests, each opponent chooses and discards a card. So compared to Flynn Rider, it does leave us a little more vulnerable after we quest, but we've already gotten the discard trigger off, which will let Prince John trigger, allowing us to draw one more card for again a net two positive card advantage. You can see how with this deck, we're very, very, very quickly going to be expending our opponent's resources. So as long as we maintain board control, we should be able to get that beast combo off in the end. Because it has a very weak stat line vote and there's no disincentive to your opponent removing it. In fact, there's quite a strong incentive. I would recommend playing it with a bodyguard card like the Prince. I did want to show some footage of Daisy Duck here, but on Pixelborn, the card is bugged and wouldn't actually trigger the discard. Next up is Bell. This is one of the cards I was first excited for in Rise of the Floodborne about a month ago, and I did actually do a, a video on, link here, ranking all of the cards released at the time, and Bell was up there. It was A tier. I didn't think it was gonna break the game, and I still don't think it'll break the game, but in this deck specifically, it got an even stronger than I initially thought it would be because of its ability, Fawny Arrows. Whenever this character is challenged, the challenging character's player's cards are all discarded. So not only does this trigger with King John, but uh, Prince John, but you've gotten rid of all of their cards. So they have absolutely zero card advantage over you. Uh, the only downside to this is that it makes it harder to play whole new world because you'll be giving your opponent resources back. It is a five cost uninkable free free that quest for free. So while it does have a very weak stat line, the, the ability that really hurts your opponent if they challenge it should more effectively dissuade them from challenging into you. So the only way they can reasonably remove the card is if they already have no cards in their hand or if they use a removal spell. And because it's a Floodborne, if we have Bucky out on the board, we will once again be able to force our opponent to discard a card when we play it, which is just, you know, the nice cherry on the cake. A really, really strong and fun synergy to keep in mind is that John Silver from set one does give your opponent's character Reckless, which can force your opponent into challenging the vulnerable Bell, which means they have to discard their whole hand, which is absolutely a busted interaction, especially into aggro lists. John Silver is a much beloved card of mine from set one and is very, very good in this deck. Uh, it's mainly there to counter aggro, but also for the bell interaction I just mentioned. It is a six cost inkable 5-5 at quest for two with the ability pick your fights. When you play this character, 
and whenever he quests, chosen chosen opposing character gains reckless. Obviously, this is great for forcing your opponent into bad trades, such as into the bell. Primary reason this card is so good is blocking your opponent from questing. So if there's any decks that are faster than us and trying to beat us before we get our Beast Exodia combo out, we can just slow down their primary questers and then start clearing up the board with our removal tools. And if you don't need to play the card and your opponent's not playing an aggressive deck, it's still inkable. So there's really no downside to inclusion here. I'd still only run two copies, but it's a very strong card regardless. On the note of slowing down aggro, we have Jasper, a free cost inkable 2-4, great stat line by the way, that quests for one. Uh, it has the ability puppy napping. Whenever this character quests, it blocks the oppose, uh, chosen opposing character from questing. This is obviously a very good card for slowing down aggro. I'm sure you've all seen it before. It's been in my Emerald Amethyst aggro list for the mirror, and it's in this list for to slow down aggro. Not much to say, good card, trades well. Let's keep going. Another easily recognizable card from set one of the first chapter is Captain Hook. One cost inkable, one two with the challenger ability. So it gains plus two attack while attacking. You probably won't be questing very often with this card for the one quest, but that's okay. It's primarily there to establish some board control and slow down aggressive decks while you're trying to get to those mid end game value cards that really let us get ahead. Even in set two, it's probably one of, if not the best one drop to curb early game aggression. Kuzco. I'm sure you all know this guy, the coolest Incan Emperor around. He's a five cost uninkable 2-4 that quests for free with Ward and the ability No Touchy. When this character is challenged and banished, banish the opposing character. I believe this ability is called Death Touch if you played Magic. Honestly, just an amazing card. Applies so much pressure to your opponent and is very, very sticky on the board and hard for your opponent to deal with. Kuzco um, is one of the main ways that will be pushing some mid-game questing in order to get us in striking distance for a one-turn kill with our Beast Exodia combo. Some of the thresholds you'll be looking at for the Beast Exodia combo are probably getting to 10, 12, 14 lore, depending on how many pieces and ink you have available in your hand. Lastly, we have the new Cinderella card, one of the cards that I thought looked really cool at the start of the set two spoiler review season. It is a seven cost inkable 5-5 five five that quest for free, which doesn't sound like the most amazing stat line until you realize that it's a resist two and shift five on top of another Cinderella with the ability the singing sword. The resist keyword is new to set two but this ability is very new to set two and primarily just a steal at the moment. Whenever you play a song the character may challenge ready characters this turn. This is amazing just for taking out key cards that your opponent wouldn't want removed and hasn't risked making vulnerable by exerting them but we can ignore that and it synergizes with our beast combo because if we play a grab your sword or if we quest with a Hans, uh, well no sorry, if we play a grab your sword to do AOE damage, it not only will it trigger the beast to re-ready so that we can quest with it again, afterwards because we've played a song we've now activated Cinderella's effect letting us challenge a readied character which will then trigger beast effect again letting us quest for even more. You can see how this card gets very very out of hand very very quickly quickly and it's amazing for controlling the board. Also just very very sticky because of a resist too so the only way you're getting through it is through single target removal like dragon fire or let it go or a board reset like be prepared. Now to look at some cards that didn't quite make the cut for the deck. First up we have bell three cost uninkable two four. What's really interesting is its ability use your imagination. While an opponent has no characters in their hand this card gets plus two quest uh, for a total of three quest. That's pretty strong and I think would be more suited to an aggressive version of this list but in our case we're mainly aiming to control the board and end the game with beast so i think you could probably see this in a lemon lime discard aggro with our control list i don't think there's any space we have a lot stronger uninkables we want to fit into our deck and ties is a card i'm a big fan of but again honestly there's just no space i think this card would work that lemon lime aggro list a free cost inkable action card each opponent chooses and discards a card and draw a card so this is a plus two your opponent has to discard we have to draw and since Synergize with Prince John, it becomes a plus three. Pretty insane if you ask me. I just don't think there's any space. It's too slow. We want to be setting up board control. This card is the card that I see myself most putting back into the deck once I've found uh, cards that aren't performing quite as well. And that is Smash. Smash is incredible. Three cost inkable. Uh, deal three damage to chosen characters.
character. We all know how good it was in set one, and it's probably gonna get better in set two because free health still seems to be a pretty key threshold for removing a lot of priority targets of some powerful cards that are likely to become meta. So depending on how we see set two progress, uh, definitely look at including Smash in this list. Uh, one thing I will add though is that a reason I didn't include Smash in this list is that it's quite clunky uh, to use as a trigger for Beast. All right, and that's it guys for my Beast Exodia one turn kill list. I am super excited to play this with physical cards in set two. I think it has a real shot at becoming a tier one deck. Let me know what you guys think and let me know what deck you're most excited for in Rise of the Floodborn.